Welcome to the D.O. Boxing Show. I'm your host, Damien Acosio. Thanks for tuning in today. We're gonna be at Milne Valley Public School and we're gonna be doing a talk for the kids there. And so basically the purpose of where I go around and I talk at different places in different schools is so I can share my story and maybe it might help someone else or help them figure out how does somebody succeed doing things in kind of an unconventional way. So I grew up in uh, Toronto. I was born in Toronto. My mom is from Trinidad, my dad's from Nigeria, but I'm first generation Canadian. I just want to let you know too, I'm videotaping, but I'm just videotaping myself. I just videotape my talks so I can show the schools kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about or the content. Um, Grade, uh, grade five kids. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, you know, people say sometimes they grow up in an abusive situation. Well, what does that mean? So basically, basically what happened was, um, you know, my father used to kind of just beat me up all the time, basically. So I never knew kind of when the beatings were going to come from, so I used to be so scared every time he'd come home. I used to get ulcers, which is like intense stomach pains. And um, so my dad would like use whatever, piece of a chair, broom, belt, his fist, and he put me in the hospital when I was nine years old. And so basically I thought I was gonna die if I stayed at home, so I ran away at 10 years old. I went to a friend's place. My father threatened my friend's parents, and so they kicked me out basically, and I was on the streets for a couple nights. Um, I basically slept at the library up at uh, Finch and Cummer, and then uh, um, during the day, I'd be, sorry, uh, slept during the day at the library, and then at nighttime, I would be at an arcade. So back in the day, well, first of all, do you guys know what an arcade is? Yeah. Okay, so they used to be 24 hours before. So I used to kind of stay at the arcade uh, overnight and then sleep outside because at that time it was really warm, and then I got picked up by Catholic Children's Aid, and they put me into emergency foster care. And from that point, I moved around from group home to group home, foster home to foster home. And then at 16 years old, I decided I'm going to move out on my own because when you turn 18 years old, if you're not going to uh, college or university, they don't continue to keep you in care. And I, didn't, I wanted to be able to see if I could actually live on my own uh, before I turned 18, just in case if I failed, I could have something to go back to. So as soon as I turned 16, I was like, hey, can I live on my own? And I tried it out and I, I actually ended up doing okay. I lived on my own but I worked multiple jobs to help pay uh, for rent. I was like falling behind in school because when I was in foster care and group homes, I was moving around all over the place and they moved me around like from Kingston to Ontario to Brampton. And so I was always changing schools all the time. Um, so when it came to high school, um, like you know, they're referencing books that you read like grade seven and then you read something again in grade eight when you go to the same school. I couldn't, I, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know, so I, I didn't do well in school, so I ended up dropping out of school in uh, grade 10, and basically I just worked. I just worked, and then um, uh, I, was, I was angry, um, I wasn't doing anything, and a friend introduced me to boxing, and I got into boxing. I went down to the boxing gym, and uh, at first, basically, I used to get beat up every day. So I walked into the boxing gym, they threw me in the ring to spar, and I didn't know any better. I didn't know that you needed to actually be trained first. I just went in there. I thought it was tough because I'd been in a couple of fights, and basically the guys used to just beat me up every day. But the one benefit that I got out of it was that I was actually, when I was punching the bags, and when I was, when I was working out, I was actually punching out a lot of the anger that I had. And then what ended up happening is through just being in the gym every day, um, I ended up getting a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better and then those guys that were beating me up I started to beat them up I, because I, I started developing skill and I started trying to refine what I was doing. One of the biggest things that boxing taught me though is about work ethic and 
investing in yourself. And when I'm talking about investing in yourself, I mean the time. So my very first fight, I did extremely bad. Um, I got beat up. The guy hit me with every punch. Every punch. If you watch the fight, you think I was purposely putting my head in front of his fist to get hit, but it wasn't. The guy just beat me badly. And, you know, I didn't want to quit boxing on that note. I didn't want to quit getting beat up so bad without trying to give it my all. And at that time, before my first fight, I was in the gym five days a week. I was in the gym five days a week. I was training for like an hour every day. But what I realized after I lost that fight is that there's always another level that you can go to. And I used to watch, um, do you guys know who Mike Tyson is? Yes. yes. I used to watch uh, tapes of uh, Mike Tyson and I used to see that he's like running for hours, he's training for hours, and I went back in the gym. I didn't have a coach at that time because I got beaten so badly, so coaches don't want to touch you. They're like, no, no, I had coaches tell me you should quit boxing. Um, I went back into the gym. I just watched Mike Tyson tapes. Nobody trained me? Okay, I trained myself. I watched Mike Tyson videos, and I went and I trained extremely hard. I, would, um, I was living in Scarborough, and I didn't have a lot of money, so what I would do without any bus fare, I would run for, uh, well, jog for about an hour into the town of Markham. And then I had no money, so I had no way to get back. After an hour, I was tired, I still had to get back. So first couple times, man, I cried to myself. I was like, what, what did I do? But I still had to make it back home, so whether I was gonna walk, crawl, or whatever, I made it back, and eventually, I got stronger doing that. And I realized that there's another level of intensity. When I went into the gym and I started, instead of just going to the gym and, you know, just shadow boxing, like going through the motions, when I went to the gym, I was like, I was shadow boxing, like I'm actually in a fight and raise the level of intensity. And then when I had my second fight, I ended up stopping my opponent in the second round. So I actually have that video on YouTube if you guys ever wanted to see it. You guys want to see that yeah. fight? Yeah. 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 This is your very first fight? This is my second one after I got the brakes beat off of me. <laughs> so, this is a 1995, and this is a heavyweight. No coach in my corner. So I'll tell you what I'll tell you what happened there. Um, so when I when I first started boxing, um, first of all, everybody said I was too short uh, to be a heavyweight. You you had asked if I got a coach, right? So when I first entered the boxing gym, the, like the boxing coaches that were there, it was the Scarborough Boys Boxing Academy. They always used to see me getting beat up every day. So they're like, nah, I don't want to work with this guy because everybody always wants to work with like the next winner, you know? And then, um, and then I got my, my butt handed to me in my first fight. And they really didn't want it. Like some coaches were telling me, hey, maybe you should like quit boxing. And then I just went and I trained on my own. I watched my Tyson tapes every day, ran like crazy. I was like working out on my own, working, working out at home as well. And then I came back and I beat that. And then and now everybody wanted to work with me. They're like, yeah, this is my fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never showed me anything. They didn't even show me how to tie my shoes, you know, like I did everything myself. And that was, that was kind of like, it was, a, it was a fault of mine at that time. I was too angry to accept the coach. So I ended up continuing to train myself. Uh, and I still did okay. I went to, I got a uh, bronze medal at the 1993 Provincials. 
I went to uh, two international tournaments, the World Police and Fire Games in Indianapolis and in uh, Australia. I got a bronze medal both times. Um, but if I had actually put my pride aside and taken a coach, yeah. then maybe, yeah. who knows, I could have maybe done even better. Um, so, you know, there's a couple points that I want to bring from, from those examples. Number one, you know, people always tell you you can't run away from your problems, um, but sometimes it is a good idea to run from your problem in terms of distancing yourself. Because sometimes when you leave something, if you get in like a fight with somebody or somebody doesn't like you or somebody is bullying you and you create that distance, it gives you that breathing room to think. You know what I mean? For me, my situation wasn't safe at home, so I ran away from home, you know? I don't think it's a good idea to run away from home if your parents aren't gonna give you ice cream, you know? But if your life is in danger or like, you know, if somebody is bullying you and you feel like you are under tremendous pressure, why not create some distance, you know? Being, growing up in children's aid might not be the ideal thing for other kids, but it was the best thing for me because I was actually in a safe environment, you know? I didn't have to worry. I didn't worry about when I was sleeping. I didn't worry. I wasn't scared every time I heard the door unlocked that somebody is gonna basically beat me out of my sleep, you know what I mean? So sometimes it's good to create that distance. The other point I wanted to bring up um, from telling the story about my fighting is that sometimes you got to fail a number of times before you can actually succeed. And just because you're failing at something and people see you failing at it and they're like, why are you still doing that? You're not succeeding at it. Doesn't mean that you should give it up. You know, if you believe in something, you like something, and even though you're not doing well at it now, you're not doing it well at it tomorrow, doesn't mean that you should give up on it. You, you should be the person that decides. You know, when I was younger, I was always looking for role models. I was like, I always wanted somebody to help me out. When I was living on my own as a young kid, I wasn't doing well at school. I was like, man, I wish somebody would help me understand this math. I wish somebody would help me, you know, learn how, how to make more money so I could pay my rent and come to school and stuff like that. And I didn't get that help. And you know, that wasn't a bad thing either. Number one, you gotta reach out. Number two, you gotta put your pride aside. But number three, too, you gotta invest in yourself. You gotta invest in yourself. So even though I dropped out of school in grade 10, I always placed a high, high importance on education. I was always educating myself. If I didn't know how to do something, I would try and get the information on how to do it. I spent a lot of time in the library. The library is free, free information here. You wanna learn how to do anything, you can look it up. You know what I mean? So if you reach out and you don't have support at home, you're not getting support anywhere else, remember that there's resources out here. There's resources out here. You know what I mean? If you don't find a role model that you can monitor yourself after or model yourself after because you don't like a certain thing that they're doing, be your own role model. Decide, who do you want to be? What do you want to see for yourself? When I was growing up, I didn't, I didn't see the kind of role model that I wanted to see. I didn't see the kind of guy that looked like me that was doing the things that I wanted to do, you know what I mean? I wanted to be successful, I wanted to have money, I wanted to do businesses. So, because I didn't see that out there, I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna try and make myself into that person that I wanna, that I wanna see. That's okay, it's just both fault. <laughs> I want, to, I want to make myself somebody that I'm going to admire. And, and that's what I did. And one of the, the greatest pleasures that I have is trying to push myself to see how much I can do. Because we're all capable of so much. We're all capable of so much. You know, so, you know, don't limit, don't limit yourself, don't limit your ideas. If you're, if you're feeling um, antsy here, don't worry about that. If you're falling asleep, maybe I'm gonna get through you to sub subliminally, I don't mind. Um, but the main thing that I wanna impart, and the reason why I go around and I talk, is I wanna let people know that, you know what, the possibilities are endless for people. It's all about work. It's all about the work that you put in. Sometimes you think you're working hard. I'm not sure if you've ever had this. You think you're working hard, and then somebody tells you you could do better. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. You guys heard that? Yeah. You know why? Because it's true. It's true. And I learned that with boxing. I was going to the boxing gym 
And I, w- I would ask people, how many times do you go to the gym and you're, and you're fighting? And they said, oh, I go like three days a week. And I was going five days a week and I was like, man, I'm doing better than this guy. This was before my first fight. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm doing better than this guy. I'm gonna kill everybody. I'm getting next to Mike Tyson. And it didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way. I was a punching bag in my first fight. I was eating knuckle sandwiches, man, it was crazy. But I found out there was another level. You know what I mean? Because you can do 10 times more in the same amount of time by adding intensity to it. Sorry, Damien, you, you talked about um, educating yourself. Did you have internet back then? No internet, internet didn't exist. Right, so one thing is, I just wanted to add to what you're saying, mm-hmm. is that uh, I know, and again, I asked Damien to come in to speak to some of you guys, so you didn't get a sense because a lot of times you guys see teachers and you see adults and you figure that all of us just had an easy life. Reality is everybody has their own story, okay? And Damien's story is a perfect example of someone who basically was self-motivated to get to the point where he is now. And the point that sometimes I talk to you guys about, you know the fact is school, much of school is boring. That's the real deal because a lot of the stuff that you're learning in school, you may not need later. But the point that Damien's making is that you need to take on the, the initiative to even educate yourself. You find an interest, there's no excuse with internet. With internet and these phones, you got a little computer in your, in your pocket. There's no excuse for you not to say, I have an interest in something, let me learn about that. And you don't have to wait, Damien's a perfect example, you don't have to wait till you you're out of high school, out of college, before you start, or going into college, before you start getting on your own path. Even he didn't know, but he was on his own path probably by the ninth, 10th grade. You know what I mean? So it's for you guys to figure out what's your path going to be. That's the important thing. Sorry, I didn't mean No, that. no, not a problem. Yes, sir. Did Mike Tyson know what you were looking up to? Mike Tyson didn't know about me looking up to him until I was an adult and I actually met him. I met him a couple times. I actually seen him again this weekend in uh, Canastota, New York, at the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Sorry? You've met Mike Tyson. I've met Mike Tyson. Uh, I've met Mike Tyson now three times. Do you have a picture of him? Yes, I do. And I'll show you after the talk is done. Because it's it's on my phone and I'm using my phone today. No, we're not. He probably doesn't even remember me. The, the, the last time you saw me, you probably didn't even remember that you met me before. The guy meets hundreds of thousands of people, you know. Um, but any of you guys can be a Mike Tyson as well. It's all about what you de- what you decide to put in. It's all about what you decide to put in. It's the work. It's the work that you guys decide to put in. If you guys want anything you want to do. One thing I would always do, like in boxing, when I started off in boxing, I was like, man, I want to know about other Canadian fighters. Where's there another... Where's, there, where's the Canadian boxing magazine at? And I, I was like, there's no Canadian boxing magazine. So I wanted, I wanted to find out about the other athletes. I didn't know what was going on with them. There wasn't a Canadian boxing magazine, so I started one. You know what I mean? Just because something doesn't exist, doesn't mean that you can't do it. You know what I mean? A lot of people will always tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that, because they didn't do it. But nothing is impossible. Nothing. Do you know what glass is made out of? Who knows what glass is made out of? Sand. 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 Who do you, how did the first person even invent that? How did the first person even invent that? Try and think back. And say we never knew glass existed. And I say, hey man, I'm gonna make something you can see through with all this mud. <laughs> what do you think other people thought about that person? You know what I mean? And when you are working extremely hard to build something, that is what people are gonna tell you. You're crazy. They're not gonna understand. Do what you feel anyways. Put the work into it anyways. Because when you work hard at something, the, the, the crazy thing about this is, if you work hard at something and you don't accomplish it, you, you develop so many skills that the next thing that you do, you have a higher probability of being successful at that. It's a crazy thing about hard work. Hard work is never, ever, ever wasted. Hard work is never, ever wasted. Because if you try something with all your might and you fail at it, 
number one, you get to know about yourself, and number two, you bring that skill to the next thing that you're doing. You know what I mean? And age is not a restriction. Age is not a restriction. You want to own a business at your age, you can. You want to be famous at your age, you can. You know what I mean? Remember, if you have any questions related to boxing, send us a message through Twitter at D-O-K-P-O-S-I-O -O, through email at close you at hotmail.com and don't forget to subscribe to get every episode of the D.O. Boxing Show. Thanks for tuning in to this episode and we'll catch you in the next one.